guys, uh, code speaking, uh, the author of Forex Broker Killer. Flesh up, are you guys good today? Are you guys good today? Uh, Flesh up, are you guys good today? Yeah, it's a chilled Monday. I've had a rough weekend. I've been busy the whole weekend. I hope you guys are good. Yes, yeah, so I just woke up now. And I just took this morning, or my morning, and I've been thinking about what I've, what I've uh, been through the whole year. 2019 to be exact you know I've been thinking about what I've been through this year uh, I've been thinking about what I've, uh, what I've achieved this year what I've failed to achieve this year you know and so forth and I was just taking a moment just appreciating you know you know, sometimes as a person, you get comfortable in living the life that you live and you forget to just take your moment and appreciate. Well, in my case, obviously, I'm going to appreciate God. But as people, we believe in various religions. Um, so as people, we differ. Uh, others know what they appreciate or what they pray to. Uh, we are not going to judge them, you know. So I've been appreciating God, you know, for everything that He has done for me, you know. Uh, especially this year, 2019, was rough, guys. This year was so rough. Like this year was very, very hectic. Yo, starting from trading, Jay. Everything just seemed to be difficult, you know. I would compare my 2019 as my 2016. My 2016 was good rough. 2016 was very rough. And then I've learned a lot, you know. I've learned a lot. I've learned so many things. And then 20, 2017... 2017 was, was, was nice, you know, it was chilled, it was very, very nice, reason being that it, it's, it's that time of the year where, okay, for me, it was that year whereby I was experiencing nice things in life, you know, having my own place, you know, not having to report to anybody, testing responsibilities, knowing how to buy electricity, how to pay for water, you know, I was, it was nice, you know, 2018 was the best, 2018 I was living the life, you know, uh, living the life recklessly so in terms of uh, spending money, I used to blow up money recklessly so, uh, because it was my first time exploring to such, you know, uh, trading, I was doing wonders. I was, I was trading like a robot. 2019, yay. 2019, I had a child. I had a baby now. Yo, Jesus. Now I'm a father. Yo, guys, go rough. Yes, now I'm a father now. And now the baby is crying. The baby wants milk. The baby wants time. The baby wants everything. I, yes, yes. A good rough, guys. So now I must, I must adjust from from being. I would say, I, I'm I'm taking 20, my 2017 and 2018 as my teenage years. I was living like a teenager. You know that moment you're exploring into like this life of having money. This life of tasting fame, you know, everything is just new to you. Everything is just nice. 2019, <laughs> yo, I'm a father now.
Now, whenever I'm supposed to blow money, I must think, what, what's going to happen if anything happens to me today? What's going to happen to my boy? You know? Will my boy be known as coach's son? Then that's it. How will he live? How will he survive when I'm not there? You know? So those are the questions which you start asking yourself when you grow up, when you start maturing into this life thing. Because unfortunately for us as blacks, there is no, there's no guidelines as to how to live life as blacks. We, the sad part about it is that we just have to explore everything on our own. You've got to find out everything on your own, you know. Uh, other people, other races, I'm sure their parents do guide them into this life thing. So us as blacks, we just go through everything on our own and then you'll just find a way to survive. It happens. So 2019, uh, that's when I, I have to be a responsible person uh, financially to start with, you know. This thing of buying cars like I'm crazy had to stop, you know. So many things had to stop, you know. I had to start thinking for the future now. I had to start thinking for the future now. So, overall of 2019, uh, it haven't been. It wasn't great in terms of how I would imagine my life to be in 2019. You know, living the life, going on vacations, just spending money for no reason. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case because 2019 was a phase of me being responsible, you know, thinking about the future because before, I, it was just me, just me alone in this world. Now I've got my own copy. I need to make sure that even when I'm not here, he's able to live life at his best, you know. So that was... 2019 for me personally and then trading wise trading wise uh, well it's still good i can't i can't really complain uh, especially because i've made a couple of cents uh, last week i've tried i can't really complain trading wise the market was just behaving the way the market behaves now one problem which i have is this you know the most nicest thing about life when it comes to making it or being successful in general is that it's always nice when you start like when you when when you start it's always nice trust me like have having your first 100k is the best feeling ever like you'll just go around your, your, your banking app and then just taking screenshots for no reason. You know, not believing that, oh shit, this is me. Wow, this is me. You know, that's the most nicest thing. But as time goes by, you making 100,000 starts being less interesting because now you've got to maintain the 100,000 lifestyle. That is the most difficult thing. That's what I've been going through the 20, the whole of 2019 you know last week i've made my first event i've made about uh about 22,000 pounds ne? 22,000 pounds uh, converted to rent it's about 400,000 i think and then just a few days back again i've made about 21,000 pounds or 20,000 pounds. Converting to rent still it's about around 400,000 rents. Man. But with the maintenance, the type of lifestyle that we are living, it's, it's nothing, guys. You know, some people might think, Hori, ah, this, this, this guys, they're just flexing, they're just being dramatic. This is a lot of money. It is a lot of money when it's your first time. It is, trust me. But maintaining, maintaining, maintaining the level that you've built, it's, it's the most difficult thing. If I had to compare it with being successful, I would say maintaining is much more difficult than getting successful. Because 
Getting successful, it's a process which you don't know when it's going to come, but you're comfortable with how you live your life, you know. You're comfortable with what you afford at that present stage. But once you start making it and then you put, you take the bar from zero to hundred, you've got to maintain it on that stage, you know. That is the most difficult thing ever. So I want to advise you guys in 2020, eh? Before you do something with the money that you'll be getting, it's either you trade or whatever that you will be doing. I know you guys will be getting bonuses very, very soon. Uh, a bonus is just a scam. Ne? A bonus which you'll be getting from your work is just a scam. I, the reason why I say this, which is sad, that's the sad part about it. The reason why I say this is I say it as an employer as well. You know, when I speak to you now, I'm speaking to you as a client, I'm speaking to you as an employee, I'm speaking to you as an employer. So the things which I'm talking about are the things which I know, which I live on a daily basis, you know. The bonus that you're going to have in December, it's a scam. Your employer just gives it to you so that you forget about your dreams. Like they just... Then you forget about your dreams because if you you, you earn fifteen thousand, they are going to give you thirty thousand. If your employer is able to give you thirty thousand, you can imagine how much he has made, or he or she doesn't really matter, you know. Which is which is what I I would do as well, you know. My the people that are working for me, I'm gonna give them a bonus, you know. But the truth of the matter is the main reason why I'm giving them a bonus is to make sure that in 2020 they don't leave me. In their head it's going to be installed that, oh, coach is going to give us a bonus in December. Coach is going to give us... Go rough, guys. Yes, yes, go rough. I'm, I'm not proud... I'm not proud that I'm doing it as well, but it's just a dog-eat-dog -dog world, you know? If you don't do it, somebody's going to do it to you. So that's why it's very, very, very wise to decide where your life, where you want your life to, to go in 2020. You know, you, you need to be sure. You need to be sure of where you life, where you want your life to head to in 2020. Good enough, guys. So... I know people will be flexing in December. People will be flexing. I'm afraid, I know you, you're going to be bonusing. You want them to feel you. You want people to feel you in Fana or you're working, you've, you've bonused and all that. But the biggest question is, is it really worth it? I'm afraid. Because now, coming to think of it, the bonus that you are going to get on its own, it's a scam to start with. And you only get it once a year, just once a year, once a year. Then you're gonna wait for it eleven months of your li of your life. And your 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 bon your boss always bonuses every day. With if if I had to make an example with the type of businesses, well, I've got I've got a couple of businesses, but they are low key. They are not. They're not putting food on the table, but their businesses, they are running themselves, you know. I don't like talking about them on social media. So if I had to compare everything with the type of, 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 of businesses that I run at the present stage, I, I would say that as much as I might be an employer, I'm not proud to be having people working for me. Because I'm sitting down and I'm thinking, but these guys, here they are. These guys, here they are, working for me. And this thing only takes one risk. Just one risk only. Just one risk. If these people are smart enough to think, they could actually stop working for me and start working for themselves. You know, there's a thin line in between. The bonus that you'll be getting in December, you're getting the bonus before because you're working hard. Ne? And you're working hard because 
you are used to getting instructions you don't want to be a risk taker i'm going to make an example with uh, a mechanic let's just say let's just say you are a mechanic you are a mechanic you are fixing uh, any Audi car any Audi car any mercedes benz car any problem you are able to fix it but because you are not a risk taker you pre you prefer working for 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 a mechanic workshop and then you earn 10000 a month what is 10000 guys 10000 a month you're working for a mechanic shop and i'm the owner of that mechanic shop i know nothing about cars i know nothing about cars but i'm the owner and you are actually the one who's doing the hard work if you had to leave me the business would suffer because people would bring their cars and i can't even fix anything i can't even change a light of a car but i'm the owner of that business and you are an employee and you're working hard for that business you are the business you see how 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 the industry works so many people are able to they have a, they stand a chance of being wealthy but the difference is they don't want to take the risk i took the risk from nothing and made sure that i start a garage a garage for fixing cars i don't even know how to fix cars then I get you, you are talented, you know everything about cars. Then you are going to fix those cars. Then I'm, I just sit in the office and make invoices. Month end, I give you 10,000. December, I make sure that you work overtime because I know you're going to bonus. December, I give you 20,000. You People will be feeling you at your cassie that you have bonused. But have you ever asked yourself, that as the owner of that garage, if I'm able to give you times two the salary that you're getting, how much have I made? Have you asked yourself, who is the real person who is doing the real job on the ground? Is it me or is it you? Have you ever asked yourself that? You guys, I know you love feeling comfortable, you love having this thing of being sure of when money is going to come in your life. I don't really blame you. I don't really blame you guys. But if you really want your life to change, then you must stop this thing. You must stop doubting yourself. You must stop doubting your dreams. Because it's not when I'm going to work for you. As us, now I'm talking as an empl employer. I'm not talking as somebody who has read articles. I'm talking as a boss as well. We are going to abuse you. We are going to use you. For the mere fact that you can't decide for yourself, you can't take a risk, we are going to do so. Next year, I'll be venturing into multiple businesses, uh, new businesses, I would say. And... One of the businesses that I'll be venturing into, it's going to be uh, the beauty world, you know, your makeups, your hair industry. I'm a coach. You know me. You know what I do for a living. You know what I'm good at. But I'm going to be venturing into uh, a beauty, the beauty industry, makeups, hair. Now, have you ever seen me? having a week on okay yeah you might have yeah you might have seen me having a week on yeah for fun but yeah on a serious note do, what do i know about her what what do i know about her nothing what do i know about makeup nothing do i even care do i even care about her no i don't care do i even care about makeup no i don't care what do i care about I care about the money that the makeup and the hair is going to bring in my life. That's why I, what I care about. That's it. That's the only thing that I care about. Now, people are going to be saying, Coach, I want to work at your place. I want to work for your makeup company. I want to work for your hairline business. You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, yes, please come. You are going to be doing the job every day, every day, 24, 8 hours a day, actually. Only because you don't want to take a risk.
You're going to be the one who's on the ground, make-uping people. I I'm not going to make-up people. No, I'm not crazy. Just imagine the whole day make-uping people. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to get a location. I'm going to market it. I'm going to get stock. And I'm going to get somebody who's willing to make money for me. Simple. It, it doesn't need a ruler. It does, that's what risk takers do. You look for a location. You do research about the business, you invest in equipment, and you look for somebody who's willing to make money for you. The sad part about this is that when these people are doing this, when these people are working, they're actually thinking that they're doing it for themselves. <laughs> that's, that's not even the case, guys. I know, I know, I know we, we can't all be successful. I know, I know that for sure. We can't all make it. We can't all be successful. But why does it have to always be black people? Have you ever thought about that? People are right. You guys are right. We can't all make it. We can't all make it. Somebody has to, to be a car guard at the mall. Somebody has to work at ShopRite Till. But why does it have to be blacks always? Have you ever seen a white person working at ShopRite Till? No, I haven't. I've been to Soshangoove, I've been to Wonder Park, I've been to places all over Pretoria, I've been to my hometown, I've been to Polokwani, I've been to all over. I've never seen a white person being a cashier at ShopRite. Why does it have to be us? Yes, you are right. We can't all make it. But why does it have to be us? Why does it have to be us who are struggling? Why does it have to be us who are doing car guard at the malls? Why does it have to be us being security guards at the estates? Why does it have to be us street vendors? Why do we have to sell fruits and everything at the robots? Why does it have to be us? Why does it have to be us begging on the streets? Why does it have to be us being employees? Why does it have to be us? Who said it must be us? Why not them? Have you ever asked yourself those things? I, I, I think I might be young. Ne? I might be young, 24 years of age. But the way I've experienced life, it's like I've been living for 60 years. That's how my brain has been programmed. It's like I've been living for over 60 years. You know, as, as, as blacks, we don't want to think for ourselves. We don't want to take risks. And the sad part about the whole thing is that it's deeper than what you and I think. These people, ne? these people, they made sure that they create hate amongst ourselves as blacks. They made sure that they create hate amongst ourselves. Your true enemy, your honestly true enemy is not any other person rather than your black brother, rather than your black sister. That's what people have done to us. Your enemy is not far. Your enemy is just right next to you. Just right next to you. They've made sure that we are our own enemies. We are. That's why even, even at this point, if a black person tries to make it in life, the first enemy they get is a black person. They never investigate us when you're when we're poor, bruh. When you are broke, I've been broke before. I've been broke before. I've had nothing before. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. Nobody investigated me. Nobody cared. What do I do for a living? What do I have? Where do I get my money? Nobody, literally, nobody cared. <laughs> Once I start buying a car, once I start having a nice house, then I get investigated. The 
biggest question is who investigates me it's my own black brother my own black brother wants to see me down and out my own black brother wants to see me down and out my own black brother never investigated me when i had nothing now that i have something i've made something out of myself now they're investigating who is investigating my own black brother who sent my own black brother it's a white person do you see how it is this thing is deeper than you and i than how you and i think way too deeper there are people there are people on top putting orders they be like yo matumi it's a white guy matumi there's this black guy who's doing this and that please investigate him it's a white guy he has given instructions and as much as you guys don't want to admit it but it's the truth it's happening even now it's happening as much as you don't want to hear this you just have to hear it i mean like it's hey guys it's all busy ah 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 you see guys ne? you see being responsible now they say the electricity went off I thought of a deal. Okay, sharp. Okay, that's all busy. I'm still using the phone. Yeah, you see, uh, that's my cousin. Uh, she was downstairs. She came to tell me that uh, the electricity just got finished. The electricity is zero, zero. Now I must buy electricity. Hey, guys, don't rent in Kuraf. I even buy electricity. Yes, last 2017, 18, I don't remember buying electricity as... Yes. But now I've got to be responsible. It's part of growing up. I'm a father now. So yeah, as I was saying, many people might think that uh, I'm being racist or something when I specify. But I'm not being. I'm just stating how it is, bruh. I'm just stating how the society behaves nowadays. It's, it's just the sad truth. As, as, as much as we might want to run away from it, but that's just the sad truth. The enemy comes from within us. We are our own enemies. The sad part about it is that there are people who are controlling how we hate and who we should hate. That's just the sad part, you know, unfortunately. And the reason why I'm telling you these things is I'm... Um, I, I don't I, I want 2020 to be different. I want 2020 to be different. I want us to make something out of ourselves. I want us to to achieve something guys. I want us to stop being used. I mean like honestly speaking, in relationships they are using us. As guys as guys, as men, in relationships, we might be using women. As women, in relationships, they might be using us. I mean, like, we can be used in relationships and also be used in real life. I mean, life is not a game. It might look like a game, but it's not a game. You can't be used even in real life, in G. Even in your career. You know, there's nothing wrong with you wanting to be a doctor. Somebody has to be a doctor. There's nothing wrong with you being wanting to be a lawyer. Somebody has to be a lawyer. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to be a security guard. There's nothing wrong. Somebody has to be a security guard. But the biggest question is, do you really want to be a doctor? Do you really want to be a lawyer? Do you really want to be a security guard? Because you can't just be those things because somebody has to be them. 
Why does it have to be us? Always, why does it have to be us? Eh? Why does it have to be us? Always. You guys, you guys are talented. That's one thing I know. I've seen it with people who are working for me. You guys are way too talented. Way too talented. The only problem is that you don't want to take risks. And if you don't want to take risks, 2020, December, I will be doing live again. I will be live on Instagram again, saying the same things all over again. And then you will be happy with your bonus. And that's not how life is supposed to be. Right now, if, if I take my car, if I take my car right now, and I go, I drive around the estate, I'm going to find competition. Not direct competition, but when I drive my car, I know I'm going to see Luma, RS, it's a CRS. I'm going to see a Ferrari. I'm going to see a Lambo. I'm going to see C63S. I'm going to see nice cars where I stay. Then when I go off the highway, when I go off the highway, when I'm on the highway, I'm still going to see nice cars. Then when I enter the hood, when I enter Kasi, I start seeing ventures all over. I start seeing Corollas all over. I start seeing Almeras, Yaris, Polos all over. It genuinely does not necessarily make me happy that I'm the only guy in the car driving a big car. In my car driving a big car. As much as I have the spotlight, sometimes it exciting, it's exciting when it starts, but there's a point whereby it, it gets tiring. You start asking yourself, I know I've made it, I'm not supposed to look down on other people, but what's wrong with these people? These people, if I investigate, the same people who are driving the polos, they're making more money for their bosses. They are the ones who are the on the ground doing the job, they're making more money for their bosses. Why don't they just leave that shit and make more money for themselves with what they are doing for a living already? I understand. I understand that people have to do what they have to do. I understand and I respect that. And I understand and respect that once you are in, you can't get out. I'm going to make an example of what do I mean by that. You have studied at TUT, ne? and then after, let's say, you studied engineering at TUT, mechanical, it doesn't matter which field. Then you, you, you got an internship, you started earning 6000 For the first time in your life, you start earning 6000 ne? After that, you get a promotion, you start earning 15000 $20,000. Now, the biggest mistake you ever make is getting into debt. That is the biggest mistake you ever make. And that is the most common mistake everybody makes. Then once you start earning your 20000 you want to take a Golf 7. Already the Golf 7 is going to take half of your salary, bruh. Half of your salary. Now, two years down the line, you'll be earning 30000 probably with an apartment somewhere. Probably with more kids now. Because I agree, you know, you know what you love. So you'll be having kids. Now, a person like me comes two years after, and I tell you that, my dog, you're driving a Golf 7, you're living at an apartment in mid-rent, you're in debt right now as we speak. You only get happy in December when you're bonus. You're making money for your boss. You're making millions for your boss. Why don't you leave this and make money for yourself? Now you can't anymore. You cannot leave your job because you've got a car to pay. You've got an apartment to pay. You've got kids to take care of. You see where it gets difficult. Now, you, you start opening your eyes now. Now you start seeing the truth. But now it's too late. You can't change the decisions that you've taken. Now you're in debt. You cannot leave your job to risk. So... If you are a parent watching this, please educate your kids not to be like you. No offense, by the way, ne? no offense. Educate your kids not to be like you. 
Because this thing, this, this type of decisions are very fruitful from the word go. Like from the roots, from the roots, the actual roots. They're very, very fruitful. Once you start getting your first salary, never make a debt. Because when you're supposed to switch into being a risk taker, it's going to be impossible for you. It's not like so many people don't know what to do to make it in life. But what they have to do is taking risk. Now, when you take a risk and you leave your job, who's going to pay your rent? Who's going to pay your car? As much as I might be advising you when it comes to this, I cannot pay for your car. I cannot pay for your rent. You can come and cry to me all you want, but I cannot give you money. I can just give you the advice. You know, so I know one thing I love about my following is that mostly it's youth. And it, it's, it's boring sometimes because I, the love which I get is from people who are 12 years old. 12 years old, 13 years old, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You know, I think that's our future right there as a country, you know. Because if they are able to know these things from a young age, then they will make the right decisions. Because I know people who are 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, even greater, they are angry right now. They are very, very angry at themselves. They are very, very angry at me for making it. They just have anger inside. Now, as, as, as our generation, I feel like, I feel like we've, we've failed to own the present. The present, I mean. As our generation, we've failed to own the present. The least we could do is to groom the young ones. You're 12 year old, 13 up to 18 years old. Let's just groom them. It's the least we can do. As us, we have failed. I'm part of the people that have failed. As much as you might see me as a person who has made it, I've failed as well. I'm not where I wanted to be at the age of 24. And it, that, that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate what I've achieved. I, I do appreciate honestly. But that's not where I wanted to be. So, so many people might ask themselves, what's in it for me for saying these things? Now, I want us to work together as a nation to groom the young ones because they are our future. Now, I'm, I'm standing up for my own race at present because my, my own race, starting from my own family, my own family is struggling, guys. My own family is struggling. My cousins are not working. My cousins don't have money. They don't own businesses. They are poor. Because now, one thing I've noticed is that this poverty, as much as I've escaped it on a personal level, me only, but in my family, it's still there. My family members are poor, and I can't keep on giving them money. I can't. It has to stop. I can't give them money. I'm trying to give them knowledge. It's just that it's difficult for them already. Because most of them are in that situation whereby now as much as they hear me, they just can't take the risk because they are already in debt. Now financial 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 freedom, financial education. Financial education actually is the most important type of education ever. If it had to, if I had to be involved in politics, in the education sector, I would push on. I would actually push the government to have that type of education. From grade eight, there should be a subject about finance. And that subject shouldn't just be about depressing you guys. I know accounting is very... People don't get, don't understand this. Accounting is not financial education. How many accountants do you know that don't have money? Accounting is just part of the system. Just to make sure that you are programmed. Accounting is not a financial education. When you are doing commercial streams, it does not mean that you are, you are, you are financially free. No. You're just part of the system. 
That's how it is. I was once part of the system. I've studied as well. There should be something about financial education, financial freedom. It should be practical, not program. Uh, how do I put this? It shouldn't be practical. It, uh, sorry, I mean it should be practical rather than than uh, how do I put this? What's the right word? Yeah, rather than programmed in a way, because what's being taught to us is programmed. If 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 you go beyond what's being taught, what you have been taught, then it's wrong. Of which as people we've got different uh, opinions. And I'm saying this to people who did metric this year. You have written your metric exams, you're waiting for results in January. I know when the results come, those who have passed are going to be happy. We are happy for you. All the best with your life. Then I'm talking to those who are going to be failing. If you're going to be failing your metric, one thing I can assure you is that you are very, very intelligent. You are very, very smart. Now, the people who are going to be failing metric, because I know for sure if they are done marking, you have already failed. It's only a matter of you finding out. You who's going to fail your metric, who you's going to fail your exams in January when the results come. You are very, very smart. You are the most intelligent person ever. Do you know why? Do you know, as much as it might seem weird, do you know why I say you are actually smarter than somebody who has failed? You are very, very unique. It's because the question paper asked a question. They said, one plus one, what is the answer? Majority of the people who have been programmed have said, one plus one equals to two. But the biggest question is, who taught you that it's two? Who taught you that one, one plus one is two? Nobody knows. It's just how it is. Everybody knows. It's a common thing. It's what everybody has been following. Nobody questioned it. Nobody questioned that. But you, my friend, who has failed. When they said one plus one, what, you, what is it? You said 11. That's why you have failed. They said that you have failed, but actually you are smart. Because you just didn't understand why 1 plus 1 has to be 2. Instead, you, you think that it's 11 because 1, 1. You see 1, 1. To you, it makes sense. Unfortunately, the system doesn't allow us to explore to that sense. It doesn't allow us to explore. You need to be different. It's not your problem that the, the system doesn't understand you. That's why they are saying that you, you, you have failed. It does not mean that you are dumb. You are actually smart. Even when they ask you, sometimes they might ask you a question like, uh, it, it used to happen in, in, in uh, math literary, literacy, something like a scenario. They say that Thomas had 10 apples. Ne? This is just an example. I'm not educated. I'm not smart. Thomas has 10 apples. Thomas ate 4 apples. Now, how old is Thomas? Hear the question again. Thomas had 10 apples. Thomas ate 4 apples. Now, the question is, how old is Thomas? Now, those who are programmed will sit down and say 10 apples minus 4 minus 4 equals to 6 now how old is Thomas it means that Thomas is 6 years old uh -huh. but the answer is simple when they say Thomas has 10 apples he ate 4 apples and then how old is Thomas right I don't know I don't know how old is Thomas. Now that's as much as they are going to say that you will you you have failed, but just that's just you being you. You are very smart. What does age have to do with how many apples have Thomas ate? Do you do you get the concept? Do you get the concept? It's because we have been programmed. We have been programmed to follow. You need to be different. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just sad that it's only now that I've realized this thing. If, if, if I knew these things way back, I wouldn't even have passed grade, grade eight. 
Because I was going to go against everything. That's how, how smart I am when it comes to life. You should, you should take life like that. You must never, never in your life, ever, let a piece of paper dis, uh, uh, decide your future. Never. Now, I know there are going to be people who, who are going to be thinking that when they fail metric, it's over for them. Some are even going to... The sad part about it is that the system has taught us that when you fail to acquire that certain qualification, you might as well commit suicide because you're useless. That's what the system has taught us. And I know there are going to be people who, said, who say that if I fail metric, I'm going to kill myself. Bruh, the reason why you're going to be failing metric is because you are smart. You didn't want to follow instructions which you don't know where they come from. You must question where everything comes from. Same goes to trading. Same goes to trading. There are people whom, when I say, today's Monday, don't trade on Monday. You know what they, those people say? They say, okay, coach, uh, we are not going to trade on Monday because you said that we must not trade on Monday. Then I'm going to have those few people who are going to be saying, coach, yes, you said we must not trade on Monday. I'm going to say, yes, don't trade on Monday. But Why? Why are you saying I must not trade on Monday, coach? I want to trade on Monday. Why are you saying that I must not trade on Monday? I would say that out of the 10 students that I might have, only one or two people are going to ask that question. The rest are going to follow. The rest are going to follow what I, I tell them. They don't even care where do I get this information. But if you had to ask me, coach, why don't you trade on Monday? Why are you saying that I must not trade on Monday? I'm going to explain to you why. And after explaining to you why, you will understand why you are not supposed to trade on Monday. You will understand why you have to trade on Wednesday. Now, even when I'm not present, even when I'm not there, you're able to say, oh shit, coach once explained to me why I must not trade on Monday. Now that means that I'm going to trade on Wednesday. I'm no longer there. Then I have these students. On Monday, they are uh, behind my back. Coach, what am I supposed to do? It's Monday. But all my life, in all my years of trading, I've been teaching these people, these people that we don't trade on Mondays. I've been explaining. Is that that I can explain on every video? But I've been explaining why we don't trade on Mondays. They just never learn. They just want instructions. Even when I'm not there, they know. It's not like they don't know what to do to make money. They know. But they just want somebody to tell them that go and make money. Then that's when they go and make money. Come on, guys. Come on. When you are learning something from a person, don't learn to follow them. Learn to go beyond them. I run the forex industry, né? and that's not something which we are going to be discussing. We are not going to discuss that. But I must say this. I'm very, very proud. I'm very, very proud. When I go around just driving around I see so many forex traders that I see on social media they've built something for themselves regardless of the type of agenda they might be pushing I'm just proud of them why because of one thing majority of them majority of them come from my hands majority of them come from my hands and today they don't even want people to know that they come from my hands. They were once my students. They know. Between me and them, we know for sure. And I've taught them one thing. I've taught them that as much as you're following me, don't follow me to follow me forever. Don't be here to follow me forever. Follow me to learn something and live. Go find your destiny. You're destined for great things. Now, I think I've said a mouthful. I didn't actually plan 
this live video you know i was just live playing my gospel song it's just that i i i become so sad when all the comments are filled with coach please send me iwalet coach i want iwalet come on guys come on guys you might even find that your job is to program fnb atms but you are here asking for an e-wallet. You are crying for an e-wallet, but you might find that your job is to program. What you do for a living is to program that ATM. Why don't you program your mind into making money for you? So nonetheless, shout out to all the hustlers. Remember one thing. When you follow me, what you learn from me. Learn to move on. Leave space for other people. You must leave space for other people in my life. I don't have enough room for everyone. I want you to come and learn. Go do what's best for you, dog. You know? And the sad part about this type of people who learn from me and they go beyond learning from me is that they end up thinking that they are the best. But that's just a public stunt. Between you and I, we both know who you have been thinking about every day before you sleep. I've played my part. I've played my part in this game. I've taught you guys so many things. Now it's all in your hands. I've given, I've given you guys so much knowledge. So much knowledge. Now in 2020, what I'm going to do for FBK students, ne? Uh, on their website, FBK website, fbkonlineservices.com, I'm going to upload all the old videos that I have in my phone. All the old videos in 2020 the whole of january i want you guys to look at all my old videos somewhere somehow you're going to learn something once you capture that find yourself you're destined for greater things you're not destined to follow me every week you are running after me coach what do i have to do this week but i've been teaching you this every week you must be a risk taker I want you I want you to be my competition someday do you know how boring it is for me in the forex trading industry I don't even have competition when it comes to trading itself I'm not talking about materialistic things because people tend to to possession a person's wealth with materialistic things wealth is knowledge bruh Knowing how to make money, knowing how to make 400,000, that's wealth right there. That's wealth right there. I haven't even found my competition in the trading industry. It's not nice. One day I must wake up and find a person on the street. I find people on the street saying there's this boy. I've never seen that before. There's this boy. This boy is a masterpiece. He's, 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 a, he's a crack when it comes to trading. I've never seen that before. Now, don't get me wrong. When I entered the, the forex industry, I found certain traders who have already been there. Now, I don't count them. People have been in the industry before me. To me, they are my ancestors. To me, they are living legends. I will always have that respect for them. I respect them. All of the traders that are found in the industry, much respect to those guys. Now, I'm talking about traders who came after me. Traders who came after me, I want competition. You guys are not even shaking me. You guys are not even shaking me. I want competition. Guys, 2020, I want you guys to pull up your socks. I want competition, people. And competition, I don't just want it with the type of car you are driving. A car is not wealth. A car does not represent money. I want to see that skill, Mfana. When I hear of you, I must, I must not even, I must not even be able to go to the toilet when I hear them mention your name. I must say, shit, fuck. Now that's competition right there. Remember. In the forex industry, we've had legends before. Much love to those people that have opened doors and gates for people like me. That's why I'm here today. But yay, traders, I want competition. 
2020, I want competition. I'm tired of being on top alone. Traders who came after me. But nonetheless, I love you guys. Much.